if you have a 3D printer, I know exactly the problem you have. A lot of 3D prints laying everywhere in your house. And you want to store them as best as possible. And there you are going to use your 3D printer, making two very practical prints you also can use using Fusion 360 and a 3D printer, right here on Zachary's 3D Prints. Hey, Zach here, welcome to this video. Yeah, if you are, you know, subscribed to the channel, you know that some of the background was really stuffed with a lot of 3D models standing on the printers, standing in between the printers, standing even inside of some printers. Reality and the six, for example, and other places everywhere. They they were just popping up everywhere, like the filament storage that I have hanging on my wall. I'm I was using four by two wooden planks to put all the filaments on there. So I was thinking like I have those planks. I have a lot. And I was thinking like okay, I want to make shelves that are wide enough where I can use those planks, just flat, and then put some. 3D printed models on top of there. But I have also those smaller models like benches, calibration cubes and other smaller models that might fit on there as well. But not taking the big shelf, the big surface. But I was like, if I make a bracket that has a diagonal, maybe I can put another plank underneath that has enough space to put it just right there. And I was looking online, but I couldn't find it. So I was like, why not making it in Fusion 360? And then the moment came that I also had to buy new speakers for my PC. But those speakers, nice set, I couldn't put them on the wall because there was no attachment to hang on the wall. So I thought like, okay, cool. How am I going to solve this? I have a 3D printer. I have some skills in Fusion. Let's make a stand where I can put the speakers right on top of it. And why not having a little you know, little niche where I can put a smaller 3D printed thing inside of there. Why not making something like that? Having a stand for the speakers, but also a little display for two small 3D printed models. So also there I went into Fusion and I made it. So I will show you exactly how I made those models. And uh, you know, let's get into Fusion. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing and uh, hit the notification bell. Within Fusion, we are going to make our first sketch. If you're not familiar with Fusion, there are a lot of tutorials online you can follow for, you know, finding out how Fusion 360 exactly works or go for the book Mastering Fusion 360, like this book. I have used it. I came this far. There are a lot of things that I still need to read, but so far I have used everything that I have learned within just those two or maybe three chapters from this book. Let's uh, go for the sketch. We click on create sketch and then check how the planes are. So you have the uh, the X axis, the Y axis. So the green is the X axis. The red line is the Y axis and the blue line is the Z axis. You can also see that right here, here on uh, on this, this uh, view. And we are going to click on this. We are going to go for the line we click on line and we take our first center point right here we click on it and then we scroll a little bit out you can go like this and you already see a number on the left side i'm not going to make a big tutorial out of it we just go for the direction that we want around the 250 something like that and then our planks are 44 times 20 millimeters so this one is 45 45 45 now we are going to make like this. This is where the first screw hole comes. Then we click first one like that, like this. And every single time when you see the blue is exactly 90 degrees, just like this. There. Just like this. This looks a little bit weird. I can imagine that. So I see that um, I made a little mistake here. We can correct that a little bit later. So we press exit. What I'm going to do. Just like that. So now we are going to put all measurements in there. So the backside is going to be 250. 
So we are going to click on sketch dimensions. D from dimension. This is going to be 250, 250. Enter. So this part and this part are going to be both equal. We are going to put a screw in there, depending on uh, like four millimeters, six millimeters or eight millimeters, there needs to be enough space to put the screw in there. This side is going to be like 20 and this side is also going to be 20. Yes. So this side, I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to say like, okay, this is also going to be 20, 20. This side here is also going to be 20. So this one is going to be 20 as well. This is also going to be 20. This is also going to be 20. I, I don't know if there is a better way, just like mentioned. 20. 20. Th these are going to be 45. 45. There's going to happen something weird here. So I'm going to do Control Z to go one back like this. I'm going to move this a little bit further. Can also move this a little bit further, but you see what is going to happen there. So that I don't want to have. So I've got still some space to play with this here. 45, and this is also going to be dimension 45. And then it's going the other direction. So that is something we don't need. So we make this like this, 45. And now you see something happening here. So every space is going to be a certain distance, 10 millimeters. 10, so scroll a little bit. That's also going to be 10. also going to be 10 and this is also going to be 10 so something like this and you see everywhere the black lines appearing so meaning everything is set at a certain distance now we are cleaning this up a little bit so that it looks more nicer so if you are looking to this you still see that there are some lines still not fully fully locked i can still move it around so this is 20 and if if I am going to test this, I can still move this. So we are going one step back and we are going to... And this one. Now you have this little T, so that is perpendicular. And this should also be at a angle. How do we do that? Quite simple. We are going to the dimension tool and we click here and we click on that. And you have an angle here. You can always choose an, a certain angle like this let's say like this is going to be 45 and now we have here a little lock meaning everything is now locked in place i cannot move anything here now this part of the sketch is finished we click on finish sketch we can click on the house you will select this we are going to extrude it and we say like uh, 20 and now it's 20 thick now we are going to do the inner part so we click on create sketch. This is the surface. And we are going to make the sketch inside of there. We are going to the line tool. So if I go here, you see now the little blue thing there, like this. I'm just going to do it like that. And then I select this, do it like that, like this. And there you have it. It's not, it's not locked yet. So we need to put in some dimensions. So we click on the D. This line needs to be 45. This line needs to be 20. This line also needs to be 20. From this line to this line, that I want to be uh, like 15. 15. From here to here, also 15. You see now more and more everything coming to its place 15 from this line to this line 15 from this line to this line also 15 this line needs to be 10 
this line also then do i need to do this yeah just like that i think it looks good like this but here as you can see because i put in some measurements next to it i constrained everything within the part that i want to have finish sketch then we are going here and we select this and this we are going to extrude we are going to do a cut to object we are going to other side we are going to select this one and we say like okay and now we have those holes in there talking about holes we also need to screw it in so we are going to this face and now we need to make the holes right in here and i can imagine that it is going to be a little challenge because this is if little face and this is a little face if i'm going to do something here i need to make two sketches create sketch i select this plane and then create circle a center diameter circle click on that and then i'm going to find the midpoint here and we say like six so this one is not constrained yet so we are going to diameter one time here and one time here. Enter. And now it's constrained. We are going to say finish sketch. We are going to do another sketch and we are going to do exactly the same thing. And now we are going to select those two and we say extrude, cut, to object we are going to spin it around we select this face okay now we are going back and now we are going to select the fillet plus this one and this one and we say like two and there, and there you go but this doesn't look so nice so we click on here we are going to add some roundings to it doesn't have to be too fancy plus we click on this side click on that side and we say like one and we have this and of course because we are doing 3d printing we also need to look for the other ones so here this one this one and you are going to select all the corners Twenty-seven. So, and just like that, everything all made by yourself. To download this model, click on bodies, right mouse click, and save as mesh. Click on OK, and then you name it whatever you want, and save it to a place on your desktop. Mm -hmm. I also made this little speaker stand, just like this. So this is very nice, very cool. And just here, a little, I made here just a little edge. So if you put your speaker on top of it, that it doesn't slide off that easily because it, there is a little edge. It is basically a very simple shape, just going quickly through it. Just the dimensions of the speaker, the, the width, the depth, and then the extrude, of course, going up. Then the fillet on these sides, these are extreme fillets. These were fillets like 20 millimeters, giving them more nicer. You can also make it a little bit smaller, so that is less aggressive, but I have made a little cut based upon that so here's the sketch this this is the whole sketch done um and then made a cut out so that it all looks nice and clean cut to the other side minus 82 so and basically uh, these are things if you just think about it things can be quite easy to do it's not that hard not that difficult just try out and see for yourself which kind of creative ideas you can design from scratch making it your life a whole lot easier. And so after downloading both files to my desktop computer, I have sliced one model to print on the Creality and the 3V3 Plus to print as big as possible and also fast. And after printing one set of two brackets, I decided to print another set of two because I have so many models and I really like how the design looked in the in the hallway. Having a lot of models, as you can guess, I, I had to cut four planks to one specific length. And for the other set, I did do exactly the same. But for the lower plank, I had to cut it a little bit shorter so that not people are bumping their heads when hanging on the laundry in there as well. So it 
is looking amazing. And also for the speaker stands, they turn out amazing. I have sliced them in a bamboo slicer for the Bamboo Labs P1S. They look amazing. I have printed those in charcoal black from Polymaker. Check out the link in the description. It's not a sponsored link, but check them out anyways, because it is looking nice. And now the moment comes, I can put some nice models of Waxer right in there because I already encountered that I want to put those models right in there. If you have also smaller models or other models that fit the size, you can also put those models in there as well, because why not using that space, not only for your speakers, but also for amazing 3D prints. So yeah, these things you can all make with 3D printing, designing, it's amazing. If you don't want to design the whole thing, um, Check the link in the description of this video. I will share them. And uh, you know, also the speakers, they will also be there. It is just amazing. Showing off the things you can make with 3D printing. Practical prints, how amazing is that? Hey, if you made it this far in this video, you are amazing. Like this video. And also, if you are not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. And also hit the bell. That would be a much help for future videos if I post them. And you know what you also can do? Check out this video right over here. It is going to be amazing and giving you a lot of extra stuff for you to watch. Right here, check it out. Here, check, check, check it all there. <laughs>